Benton and Davis's plaque lift procedure. So previous strategy can be used for the detection of cloned DNA fragment when we use microbes like bacteria as in host organism. In some cases we can also use bacteriophages as host organism or even for the packaging of the DNA and then the host organism it is subsequently infected uh, and the detection may be based on plagues. Now which plagues may contain our target DNA it can be detected by the strategy that was devised by Benton and Davis in 1977 and their procedure it is called as plaque lift procedure. So here again the target DNA or the clone of interest it is ligated within lambda vectors and after ligation the in vitro packaging it is there and then the recombinant phages they are used to infect the host organism that may be uh, a bacterium or the E. coli. After infection the lysis of the bacterial cell is there that can be detected in the form of plagues. Now plagues that are produced they may contain our recombinant DNA or even some unpackaged DNA and then the target clone again it can be detected by in situ hybridization. So actually this method has been uh, developed or modified from, uh, from previous method to detect the packaged DNA uh, in the bacteriophage lambda after the plague formation. So here again the plagues that are produced after cell lysis they are transferred on nitrocellulose membrane. So uh, nitrocellulose membrane it is placed on agri-plate that contain different type of plagues and one of the plague may, may be that contain our cloned or target DNA. When plagues they are shifted on nitrocellulose membrane again it is treated with alkali so that phages may be degraded or lysed and target DNA may bound to nitrocellulose membrane and then uh, subsequently it can be uh, detected uh, by autoradiography. This diagram explains the plaque lift procedure. This squarish petri plate it contain host organism that can be infected with appropriate concentration of phage particles that may be 5 into 10 raised power 4 recombinant phages. After infection on the host organism it is incubated for 6 to 8 hours if we need small sized plagues or it can be incubated overnight so that larger plagues may be produced and after incubation it is cool at 4 degrees Celsius so that agros or other type of solidifying agent that we are going to use uh, it may be stiffen or may become hardened. After the plaque formation, the nitrocellulose membrane are sheeted. It is placed over the plate so that plaques may be shifted on nitrocellulose membrane. And after that, again, it is lysed on the membrane, phage particles, and uh, the DNA it is transferred on the nitrocellulose membrane. And here, again, it is subjected to different neutralization treatment and baked so that target clone may be firmly bound. And in the next step, it is placed in a solution of probe or hybridization probe that can detect the plagues that contain our gene of interest. So these are different plagues that contain our gene of interest. And these plagues can be picked from the master plate for further processing after detection with autoradiography. Although here the hybridization probe uh, it can be uh, detected by using different type of radioisotope like P32 phosphorus it can be used. Uh, Sometimes uh, it may be appropriate to avoid radioactivity uh, and some other chemicals they can be incorporated within the target probe like biotin which is a type of vitamin B and even uh, the uh, 
dig oxygenin, which is a type of steroid, it can be incorporated into the probe and then these chemicals can be detected with antibody or by using uh, other techniques. So, radioactive material can also be avoided and can be replaced with some other uh, chemicals in order to perform in situ hybridization. So, this is the plate lift procedure that can be used to detect recombinant phages after the plaque formation.